Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Magali. I'm an Oracle Apex developer and in today's tutorial we will explore the copy to clipboard functionality. This feature allows users to effortlessly copy text or data from your application with a single click, enhancing the user experience and also improving productivity. We will go through the steps to implement this feature as well as discuss various use cases and see it in action. So let's get started. Let's start with a use case. Imagine you have a report in your Apex application displaying customer information. Often users need to copy a specific details such as an email address or a tracking number to use in another application or document. Manually selecting and copying this information can be tedious and error prone. For example, I know that I have sometimes copy text and forgotten the first two letters. Um, but with the copy to clipboard functionality, we can provide a simple button next to each piece of data, allowing users to copy it instantly with a single click. So very useful if you have large data sets, large descriptions, and you want the user to just be copy and paste. We will go through the steps to implement this feature, discuss its various use cases, and see it in action as well. This code that we're going to write is commonly used in web application when there's a need to allow users to easily copy information to the clipboard uh, with a click or other event on a specific element. We're going to be using jQuery and the clipboard API to make this interaction and functionality. So this is our page. We have a report with name, salary, and email. And in the email column, you can see I have on the at the end of the column, the copy button. If I hover over it, I get the copy to clipboard title. And on click of it, I get a small message saying copy to clipboard and that disappears and fades away after a few seconds. Then if I do control V or command V, depending if you're using a Mac, I get that value. The same if I were to try to do paste uh, within the mouse, then as well, I get a copy text. So now that we have seen what we're going to, we're going to be building, we can get started on the code. So first we're going to go to a report just to see what there is here. And we have employee ID, the name, email, and salary. For this video, I have done the copy functionality within the same column as the email. However, this is not required, you can have your an extra column in the report with the button that you want. So you could either do in the latest versions columns and click create virtual column, or you can, if you don't have that option in an older version, you can just add oops, null and add your HTML formatting within that. Alright, so for implementing this, we're going to go to the email column and on the column formatting HTML expression, we're going to add our button. And since we want in the application to look the same as all the other buttons we have, we can go to this useful reference in universal theme and we have button builder It's like the second option. And what we can do here is customize the button and have the same markup, same classes that our applications use. So you can select text, text with icon, icon, and you can see how it changes at the top. And you can customize uh, the template as well, simple, remove UI, anything you want. And then you have the option to use to use this as a link text, link attribute, or entire markup, depending on what you need. But it's very useful if you want to create different uh, settings and you need to use HTML to achieve it. So in this case, because we are creating the entire markup, we're going to use this option right here. And you can copy and paste that and paste it right away here. Because for my example, I have it in the same column. I, do, I want to do more than just copying the button. So for that, I'm just gonna retrieve that. <laughs> Perfect, so we have here the code 
And for this, I have a container with a class CC email column. And inside this container, I have my email column inside a development and I'm using substitution strings to make reference to my column in the class report. Uh, the syntax for class report is hashtag. So that's why this is the name of the column is inside. Then my other div element contains the button. Again, this is copy right away from the button builder. As you can see, it has the same classes, but we're going to add on it by adding our own custom class. This is very important because this is the identifier we, we will use for our dynamic action. This will be the jQuery selector. So you can name this anything you want as long as it's unique. So in my case is CC, copy the clipboard, so custom class, copy the clipboard. Then we also need in this panel element, because this is, um, if we inspect the button, this is um, oop, where the text is a, a store. You can see it here. So for that, we need the data attribute. If you have seen my previous video, I have gone more in depth in the data attributes, but data attribute is used to store any information you might need later to retrieve. So in this case, I have the data attribute and I have named value to copy and I'm making reference to the email. So again, this is for me to be able to see in here. You can see the data attribute. Just zoom in in there. And data dash value dash to copy and then I have my email within there. All right, so once we have set up that, my custom class and my data attribute, this validate, click OK and save. Now we can go to our dynamic action and on click. We're gonna name this copy to clipboard. Change the event scope to dynamic. And for the event, click selection type. We're gonna select jQuery selector. In here, it's not necessary for you to add a class. If you would like to use an ID, you can use that as well. In my case, I'm just using CSS class. So if you use a CSS class as me, you will need to use the dot and then the name of the class you created and you add it to your button. So in this case was CC copy to clipboard. So here, so dot CSS class. Okay. Now for the action, we're going to select execute JavaScript code. And within here, just going to retrieve my code for that. The first step is to declare a variable. We want to fetch that email when I click on that button. And I need to make sure it is the record I'm selecting. So for that, I create a variable, copy the value, this triggering element, meaning the element that I'm being, that is being clicked, then find the attribute data value to copy and fetch it. That's what I'm doing with this. So to show what this does, we're going to console log this. And if I click, sorry, let's open inspect. If I go to console copy, then you can see the appropriate email is being fetched. So it's really important that we select the trigger and element and then the attribute. <laughs> now that we have that, we can do the next step, which is using J the clipboard API. So for that, we use navigator.clipboard, which is the clipboard API, and then write text. Now to break this down, this line uh, is using the clipboard API, which provides a way to programmatically copy text to the clipboard. That's what its name will imply. And the write text, it's going right here, is a method that writes the text pass to it. So in this case, we are going to write the text from my variable copied value. So if we 
click OK in here and save. Let's see what happens. I run and I click the button. We are not getting a confirmation message because we haven't added that code. Then if I do paste, then you can see the email is there. Let's try another one. Yes, perfect. So we are writing the text of a variable into the clipboard. Now, the next step is to show a sex message. So for that, we're going to start by first calling the apex.message and we're going to set the page the message for that. So we're going to use apex.message.show page success. Copy the clipboard. Uh, again, this message could be anything you want. In this case, it's just copy the clipboard. And because right now, if I just add that, usually the message would just stay there, but you wouldn't want that to happen. You wouldn't want that message to stay there forever and having the user to have to click on it to close it. So to change that behavior, after we have show our page success, we're going to add the following code. So we're going to do first create a constant. And this uses the jQuery to select the HTML element with the class the alert success, which represents the success alert we got in Apex, so if I inspect this, uh, you can see it right here. The ID is T alert success. So, sorry, this one right here, this class. It's quite tiny, but this is the one I need, T alert success. So, uh, something very important to note is that this custom implementation depends on the Oracle Apex markup. So if the team changes this, you might need to restructure uh, this implementation to fit with the new markup. So this one seems to work in this later version. So um, again, if this changes, you might need to update. So now that we are obtaining the element, the next step is to just retrieving the code. It's here. With this line of code, line eight, what we're going to do is set the ID attribute of the selected alert element and make it name CID alert because we don't want to affect any other success message we have in the page. We want to specifically target this one that displays when I when I click in my button for copy it. So for that I use, I'm adding this custom ID. So custom ID alert. This line of code is very useful uh, if you want to manipulate or identify the element later on, on in any case. The next step is actually to animate uh, success message and by animate I mean adding an animation to the alert element. So the first step is using animate here and then I'm gonna set the opacity to zero. So it will I'm specifying this element, this success message will gradually change to zero until it becomes fully transparent. Then this 2500 is setting the duration of the animation uh, where it's going to go gradually uh, to 2500 milliseconds. So that's about 2.5 seconds. So in 2.5 seconds, I want it to go from full view and then start fading. Then we have uh, the animate callback function um, is executed after the animation has been completed. So after my opacity has reached zero, then I want to remove my page success. So for that, I use apex.message.highpage success that calls the apex API function to hide the success message. Okay, so now that we have that, click OK, save and run. 
and we click copy and then we can see a message and 2.5 seconds later it just disappears and again I can go here and paste and I'm getting my values again copy it paste in it and there we go so again these functionality depends on the Oracle APS markup if you add in that hiding and showing success message but if you just want to show something different you can go ahead and do that uh, this is one of the multiple functionalities and implementations you can create with the Clibo API and that's it for today's tutorial on the copy to Clibo functionality in Oracle Apex I hope you found this information helpful and that you can now implement this feature in your own applications to enhance user experience if you have any questions or need further assistance please feel free to leave a comment below I will leave in the description the code the base application and the full application completed so you can go ahead and play around with it thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and stay updated for more tutorials. See you next time. Bye-bye.